We are now going to do a fresh install of CentOS 8.1, the latest version of CentOS at the time of this installation. We have already allocated hard disk space for this installation to make a virtual machine under VMware, and we have inserted the install disk image, and we are ready to begin. So we will uh, not take the step of testing the media and installing it because uh, that takes some time. So we'll just go directly to an install. So I'll just move to the first element here and hit return. And uh, we'll try to do this install as quickly as possible. So we'll choose mostly the uh, default choices. And we're going to do a workstation install rather than a server install. Uh, because this is what is desired for this course um, to have a, to have a user-based uh, install. Okay, so the first choice is to pick the language. We'll pick English. And then uh, we can go really through any order we want through these different choices uh, to begin with, but let's just go in order. So we've already picked an English keyboard with the US uh, layout. And also language support is set up for English for the United States. You can click on these to make those changes. For the time and date, uh, it's actually better to make sure the network is installed first. So here I'm going, I clicked on network and I'm going to turn on the network. It found the network card and it's kind of ready to go. Probably should configure, uh, but I think the default choices will be fine. If I go to general, uh, it says all users may connect. And then if I go to IPv4 settings, you'll see it's automatic DHCP. Uh, so that's generally what you want rather than having to give it a fixed address. So we'll just say OK for all this. And uh, um, I guess we should say connect automatically with priority zero. That means it'll always connect when you start up the machine. And we can say done. The reason it's good to do that before we set the time and date is we can now have network time on, which means it will automatically find the time. Uh, I'm currently doing this installation from Central Time Zone in the United States, so you can try to do that with the mouse. And I got it right. It's set for Chicago, which is Central Time. So I'll say done. And then uh, the installation source is uh, rather important, but that's local media. I already have the DVD set. As you see, it's CentOS 8-1-1911. That's the uh, latest version of CentOS. For the software selection, uh, let's just keep the workstation. I could make it a server with a graphical interface or just a server. If I really wanted to be quick, I could do a minimal install and then bring everything up later that I need. Uh, but within the workstation, I should pick a few things. So I'll pick GNOME applications, internet applications. Uh, you'll probably want to pick the office suite and productivity, but I'd like this to go quickly, so I won't do that right now. Uh, I'll pick development tools in case I want to compile anything. Um, and that's probably the main things I need right now, but you can always change everything in detail once the system's up. So it's, it's good to do a, a relatively quick install. The trickiest part here is to do the installation um, partitioning setup. So I'll pick, I've already got picked here, the virtual 30 gigabyte disk. And if I wanted to take things really fast, I would do automatic storage configuration uh, and let it decide what kind of partitions I should have, how big they should be, etc. And you may want to at least look at that, but I'll, let me just do custom because it fits in better with my needs. And then I can say done. Okay, and then I get to pick what kind of installation. I want to do a standard partition and not an LVM, which is logical volume management. Uh, I just want a simple standard partition, so I'll do that. 
and then I actually have to create the partitions I need so I hit the plus sign and I'll have one big partition for everything so it's mounted at slash and let's give it 29 gigabytes and I'll add that this is the 30 gigabyte disk and then I'll add one more okay and that won't be mounted that'll be for swap and if I don't give it desired capacity, it should take it all. Uh, which it actually decided it should have three gigabytes. I'll let the system go with what it wants. It's, it's doing that based on how much uh, memory I have. Okay. Um, and it says I have only like one megabyte left out of the total 30 gigabytes. The one other thing I get to do for the first mount point here is pick what kind of file system. And you notice the default on Red Hat now is, or CentOS is XFS. Let me make it ext4, um, which is which is easier to mount from other other machines, etc., than XFS. But you can just take the the uh, default if you prefer, and then I say done and should be done it's telling me do i really want to do this because it's going to wipe out everything that's on that disk and i'll say sure accept the changes so uh i'm pretty much done uh k dump is a system you can set up so that if the system crashes you produce what's called a core dump file so i'll just you know you probably won't need to use that it'll be a little faster to boot uh when you have a new kernel so I'll just not enable that, but uh, if you're doing a development machine, you probably want that. We already configured the network, and under security policy, uh, we won't do any specialization. We'll just leave it alone for now. You can always change it later, and then you just say begin installation. Now, it'll already take a head start on trying to load some packages and files while you have some more information to put in. Uh, first, you'll have to pick a password for the root account, and so I'll do that. And it's actually LF train for uh, machi virtual machines we use for the classes, which is a pretty simple password. And uh, it's it's hard to read here, but it it should be saying it's too simple. I can't see that. Oh, it says weak here, but it says press done again to use the password anyway. So I'll do that. This is a throwaway machine. And then I have to create a user. I'll make the full name of the user LF student. And by choice, by default, it wants to make the username of the account L student, but we'll just make it student. Um, it will require a password to use this account. If we said make this user administrator, it would be like Ubuntu systems where there's just one password and uh, you have to do as you do to do anything privileged, but let's keep a standard Unix type setup with separate accounts and passwords for the student user and the root user. So we're going to give a very simple password again, just the word student. And once you get it, so, oh, it says it does not match. I must have typed things wrong. Let's try again. S T U D E N T. S T U D E N T. Yeah, so now it says the password contains the username in some form. You will have to pass done twice to confirm it. It's also considered very weak, but we'll accept it. Once again, it's a throwaway machine. In real life, you shouldn't do this. And so I say done. And now uh, we just have to wait for the install. You'll see it has installed 500 some odd packages out of 1481. We could keep watching while this happens, but it takes some time, so I'm going to pause the recording and come back when it's almost done. So it has finished and it's configuring the kernel now. Uh, that takes a little bit of time. It installed, I think, 1481 packages. So now it's doing the actual configuration of the kernel. It is doing a few other configuration steps. You notice it is installing the bootloader. It configured the editors. It's generating what's called the init ramfs, which is uh, 
needed to boot. It contains the initial file system, which is stored in memory for be, just for the system booting, which we talk about in detail in this course. And this is probably the last thing it really has to do before it's done. Uh, depending on the complexity of things, it can take a while. It is now complete. So now we can simply reboot. So let's do that. And we should have a running system. And you see it wants to boot there into the default kernel 4.18.0. And I didn't do anything, it will automatically boot on its own. And then there's a few things that happen when you start up the first time. I, it wants me to accept the uh, end user license, which is pretty simple for an uh, open source product. Um, and then finish configuration. It has a few other things set up and we're ready to do our first login as student so I clicked on that I type in the password and we have an up and running system and uh, it's going to ask us to confirm again our choice of language and uh, we could check to make sure the keyboard is okay but uh, we're fine with English US and uh, I'm going to turn off location services. That's a, that's a choice you can make. And if you want, you can connect to various online accounts. Uh, we're going to skip all that. And we're ready to go. So now we have a fully functional system. It brings up so a tutorial screen if you want to get some more information. We'll just skip that. And here we are. It's a fully functional system. If I want to uh, get a little information, let me drop to a command line. So I clicked on activities. I'll say terminal, and, and here we are. So for instance, if I do df-h, you'll see uh, I've used 5.2 gigabytes, uh, and there's plenty of space available. Uh, if I wanted to change the size of the screen, depending on your hypervisor, sometimes you can just kind of drag it out or something. but. Uh, here, let me go to display settings, and it's set for 1280 times 768, and I obviously can go bigger. So just to show you, for instance, let's say I take 1920 by 1220, and I'm filling up the whole screen now. It's actually bigger than my whole screen, so I'll revert to settings. But you can do all sorts of other adjustments. And we've done a complete install of CentOS 8. It's all set and ready to use and customize to your heart's content.